Okay, good evening everybody. So tonight we will just review our file IO operation that and we may go something advanced. But actually those are not in the syllabus. So these are optional, okay? But and then in the second half I can discuss about uh, the test three, upcoming test three study guide. Okay, so if you leave early, then you may lose some miss something. Okay, any, any issue? No, no okay, thank you. So we are discussing file IO operations, sir. Just you know, uh, in order to make <laughs> make our life simple. Okay, so I already, as I told you, I already created a GitHub repository. Okay, and GitHub repository, I put all of my a uh, number of course over here. So I like you to download this code and then make some changes and then run it and then try to understand. Especially I like you, although this syllabus does not cover, to understand about the scanner. Scanner and buffer reader. There are two classes, scanner classes, uh, cl scanner class and buffer class and buffer reader class. Actually, you really need to know the use uh, and uh, uses of scanners. So the scanner is simple. Scanner is C equal to new scanner. Okay. Scanner works in a way that actually when in order to write some data in a data file, you need to input from a source, right? The common standard source is keyboard. Another source may be a data file. So that means you are reading either from a keyboard or from one file, and then you are displaying either on monitor or you are saving on another file. Or there is a third option that you may print your file on a printer. These are the options, right? So scanner class has some methods. These methods are mainly maybe eight methods, eight, nine, ten methods, like next line, and it has next, or it has a has next, and next integer, and next long, next boolean, next double. These are the methods. For instance, next integer is used to get the uh, get a, an integer number by using scanner object and next long is used to get and uh, to enter a long number that can be an integer as well because an integer number is a subset of long number right so you can use that one and next double is used for getting a decimal point number and actually next line is used for getting a, a string, a string with space as well, and uh, until you press enter, end of line. But scanner, uh, this some of this method in scanner class ha have some limitations. Okay, so I have uh, so actually. Mm, uh, you need to know it's, it's better if you understand those limitations. Okay. Uh, I want, uh, sorry, I forgot. I wanted to put some few more uh, extra methods, examples over here. But I will put some examples and you can get it. Maybe tomorrow I will see. And um, so, in order to resolve this issue, there is scanner. You see this problem. It's the last one. It says, Scanner issue. What is an e or issues of the scanner? For instance, in this program, so let us try to understand this program. Who are people who are in the back? Can you see my code? Okay, that's good. So this is a scanner object, SCA, SCN is scanner object. And in the first thing, in the first this on line number, this line, I am just displaying a prompt. 
it will say enter an integer okay so whatever so they, they i say integer a will be scanner dot next integer it is supposed to get to get an integer okay then i am if i am doing so if i so for instance if i you have if i do like this way For instance, in this program, let us understand the limitation of scanner. You have entered uh, class A. Okay. So it's very simple, right? So this program says. So if I run my program, this, this program will say enter an integer number. Let me enter integer number 34 or something. Okay, and then press enter. Then it is showing me the number. It's straightforward, simple, right? It's working. Okay, now how about if I put another another uh, Prompt. For instance, I want to do after entering an integer, I want to enter a string. Another. Another, I want to take another in. For instance, it will say me enter a string. Then I want to, for instance, I want to do something. I want to uh, display my A and B. So apparently, it seems. It looks that this code is okay. There is no issue in it, right? So there is no compile time error. There is no compile time error. And previously I showed you that these lines of code run fine, right? Okay, so but now if I do this one, so I, for instance, I'm entering a, something and I'm Entering another thing. That what it will do. So I'm entering 34 for the integer, and as soon as as I press enter, then my program is ended. Actually, it says enter a string. That it says you have entered. It takes only the integer, but it does not take the string. Issue the issue you, you got it. The issue that is that as soon as I press enter, enter end of line, it does not allow me to take another another input. The scanner object does not allow me to take another input. Okay. So this is a, an issue, right? This is a limitation of scanner object. Okay. In order to resolve this, there is way, there are some certain ways to resolve this issue. Maybe we need to uh, put some codes in between. After scanning one value, before scanning another value, I need to put some code over here. There is an alternative way, or there is an alternative class. It is called buffer reader. So this is a buffer reader example. If you go top the top one, the buffer reader example. So instead of using scanner object, I just use buffer object, buffer reader. Okay, the buffer reader it also takes a as an argument, this is buffer reader, uh, what is this, constructor, right? It takes an argument as an input stream reader. Okay, an input stream reader takes the system dot in. And but previously what I did, just what we just, we put the system dot in within scanner. But here at this time, we have put system dot in as the argument of input stream reader and we are putting input stream reader as an 
argument of the buffer reader constructor. So as a result, okay, so then everything is here, it has a different method parse integer. So, so in the buffer reader class, it has instead of the so parse integer, it will have a, a parse double, parse double, parse uh, mm, string, like this, parse, maybe parse boolean. So there are some methods over here, it's okay. So now, I have the entire code on, on my GitHub account. You don't need to write. You can write in something, but you can get enter code from GitHub. You know how to get GitHub? Um, yes. Oh, you have a question? Yes. So, so input string reader works in a similar way to scanner that allows the user to, the user to input um, to input data. Yes, it, scanner allowed. I I discussed right. In the like, for instance, the scanner demo program, if we scanner like this way, so let me run this program. This program, right? So what was your question? We ran, ran this program, right? We found a limitation. So what was your question? Well, I was just asking, like, in preparation for the last test, I was looking at a lot of people will scan, um, like, after they create the text file, and will input, and will output code onto the text file. I was looking about how people would scan the text file, then output it to the console. And I saw people using um, uh, scanner, scan equals new scanner, but in parentheses, they put the, the uh, variable name in the file. And then declare the file. So I'm just curious. To I'm going to file operation soon. Okay. I'm going to be going back to file operation soon, but let me finish this one. Thank you. Please remind me if I skip it. Okay, so the, we've got some limitation of the scanner object. So in order to resolve this limitation, we use buffer reader class. So the buffer reader class has some different methods, set of methods. So like for instance, if I run this program, the same program almost, it will prompt me, enter an integer, for instance, I'm putting 34, and enter a string, I'm putting my name. So then it will work. Okay, so this is that, just I mentioned some limitations of scanner reader. This is a good interview question, so people ask why buffer reader is used, class is used. Okay, now I will go through, uh, go to uh, program for the class, for what is the course? for the uh, okay yeah well, okay well, now we'll discuss about the file input output version okay Because learning about scanner and reading writing so is a uh, so is a prerequisite for file operation. Okay, in last class we got an issue. Okay, so about file location. Remember that I had to put that way this way. So I, if I have to put if I want to uh, create a file in a specific location, I can put this way. The specific location or I just remember that there is a maybe there it should have an alternative way for instance instead of doing this way I can do uh, dot then forward slash okay so 
So this dot forward slash will create a file in the in the uh, in the root directory of this project. Okay, actually, where it is, this is the if I go to this, if I do right click on Eclipse, then show in, then if I open it in a system explorer. So this is my file, this is my project, and actually, okay, this is my project root directory. Okay, so. So if I use a dot, just simple dot, then forward slash the file name, then it will create, it's easy that can convenient that it will create, actually I don't need this one, it will open and that Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. And then, for instance, and then for the output, I can give dot and then forward slash. Dot and forward slash will open my file in where? In my project root directory. So on this location, I do not have any file name as test.txt, right? You see, I don't have any file of ts.txt. So then if I run my program, let me make it better. If I run my program, then it, it already created you see that it's already created this whole file test dot txt it's just created at 650 right my time is 650 it's just created right so this is the location of my root directory of my project so now if i add write something and press enter Okay, good evening, happy Halloween. So if I write it and enter it, then done, actually file. So my whatever I have while I press, until I press enter, so then it will write whatever I read in. Okay, so you, instead of backslash n means enter, instead of pressing enter, you can put other character set. For instance, control plus Z, control plus C, or uppercase C or uppercase Z, yes. Um, when you put in the dot uh, forward slash test the second time, uh, the file output screen of post, yes. uh, does that create a duplicate? No, it's open. Okay, so here you are creating this file, you are creating, you are uh, opening this file for write mode. Okay, and, and here, you are opening here, you are opening this file in order to write something with FWS. And later, you are using FOS uh, to open that file for yeah, getting file, you know, uh, this is for file output stream getting something from file okay um what's the difference between the file output screen and the buffer writer and they're both the same what is the buffer writer here you do not have it right there um i just attempted to do this the other day and it didn't work with using buffer writer Uh, I will go back to your uh, question in a minute. Let, let me finish this one. 
okay so now he, here what I have done here I have this code in my file so let me go to my folder and then open the file and you see my text is there right so okay so now if I run this program again okay okay so just I put thank you so this since I open this file in append mode so I sh should have this thank you code within this program within this data file right is appended okay so now what happens if I want to create my folder my file within this location the same location for instance here under this package chapter 15 okay so under the here in the chapter 15 here my program is here for instance my program are here in this location I want to create my file here so that quickly I can see here I don't need to go in the Explorer so let me see the location of this path show in right click show in and system explorer and it is actually within 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 the project root directory I have another directory src under src I have chapter 15 right you see so I have under the here under the project root directory I have src folder and after under src folder I have chapter 15 so the easiest thing is that I need to change my code here so I got root directory here then I need to put src then forward slash chapter 15 is my package name package is a folder okay so it will create my file on the same location so actually I need to okay so now let us go there in chapter 15 I do not have test.txt right I don't have any of that file so now if I run my program it will create a file on that location you see it created test dot txt folder right now at 656 is 656 okay so now same thing same program so I'm adding something so hello is added there okay hello is added there and then if I run again then it will open that file as open mode so okay so the actual file in order to open a file in uh, append mode just you need to add another extra extra mode over here so mode is uh, by default uh, by mode you have to put in true that's I'm getting a uh, putting a value uh, variable over here instead of variable you can put true over here instead of putting variable you can put true that will work too so Paris question us that why do you uh, use buffer reader or mm, file output stream and file input stream and file reader? actually these are different thing okay so buffer reader is for in taking input from keyboard okay and file output stream is used for getting file from uh, getting data from a file okay and file input stream is used a file writer is used to open a file 
or in 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 a it's speak mode, either the read mode or write mode or append mode. Okay. Actually, uh, the slides we we don't have enough enough uh, information in this slide, but okay. So if you have energy and if you have time, then I can discuss something extra uh, about this. Yes. So like from the text file, you have you have file reader and file input stream. Yes. Let me go to. So I like wish. What is the benefits of using file okay. input stream over like file reader? Okay. I wish I could uh, teach input output stream first, then file uh, I/O operations. Okay. So actually, this is information from my book. You will not understand language, but basic thing that you you should understand here. So this is file stream class inheritance. Okay, this is a like input stream. So let us look at this uh, class hierarchy. So we have input stream, the base level class. Then we have file input stream. Okay, and the, uh, we have we have another input stream is filter input stream, and there's there it has subclasses like data input stream. It has buffer input stream. It has line number input stream. It has push back input stream. You see that there are a lot of class hierarchy. Okay, so the input stream is the top level. Just remember one thing: the input stream is on the, on, is on the top level. This is an abstract base class, and then it has a subclass. It's called file input stream. Okay, so then let me go through other other steps. Okay, and for instance, look look at uh, output stream hierarchy uh, stream. So if I can uh, write in English, then maybe you will understand. Output stream class in. So it shows an output stream class relationship. So it's for instance that which I showed you input stream reader, and likely we have output stream. Output stream object. This is a base abstract base class, and it has likely data input stream and output stream. Okay. So main 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 thing that actually you need to understand is this thing. Um, okay. So let us think. Uh, let me see that if you understand this. So we have input devices. We have an input device, and in in order to take Input from input de an input device. We use input stream. That one of the class input stream means we use one of the classes for uh, these classes. One of these classes object. One of these classes. All these are input stream. Okay. And then we get data through from input device through input stream. And into my program, and after it's getting into my program, then we use a reverse order. So we deliver, we send data to the output stream first, and through output stream it goes to output device. So here, if you want to use if you want to send the data to output device means your file right so then you need to use uh, normal is uh, so instead of normal uh, output device the monitor we you need to use file output stream right and if you want to get input from uh, a file then you need to use also file input stream. So this is why in your program you have to use a combination of input stream and output stream. Okay. And some sometimes if you want to uh, use, for instance, our the previous in our previous program, right? What we did, we created here. Let me understand. We in this line on line number eleven. We just use this line in order to create a file. 
That's it. Right? And then we just give this information. Okay, so this the file is created. Put some information, blah, 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 that, whatever you get, okay? And here, Okay, you see here, we use another file output stream. Okay, while you are using whatever data we are inputting, taking, I'm sorry, it just messed up. Okay, so here we are using system.in.read. We are reading character using read input stream. It's from keyboard, right? And then why, until we press and a new line character, okay, and let us make it different until we put uh, uppercase Z. Okay, so until we put uppercase Z, it will take data input, while not press uh, G. So whatever we are character we are taking from our input stream, we are sending those to file output stream, okay, using write method. And finally, we are closing that uh, file, whatever we created, file, uh, uh, just this line. Okay, so the, this line here, you see that we have a combination of, okay, file output stream as well as system.in.read. This is standard in this is input stream right system dot in dot read is input stream right and write uh, fos file output stream so now what is your question please can you please repeat your question well, you, well, you answer my question i have a next question um why didn't you use uh try and catch like exception handling where Okay, so yeah, in, in instead of ex, uh, using try catch block, I use throw I exception. This is an alternative way. What does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? Is that a throw an exception if it doesn't work? Yes. It implements it? Yes. So instead of this, if I if I get rid of this, throw it up, if I get rid of this throw exception, you will see that as soon as I get rid of it, it will show me error message where all of my file input writer it is asking me to what is this if i hover my mouse here it will show either as throw declaration or sound with a try catch block what is the best practice for it people use try catch block so instead of using throw exception use try catch block because then you can do something else within your cache block. Okay. But here, what it will do, it will just throw the exceptions. Yeah, in the next class, we discuss difference between throw and throws. So in, in my uh, uh, hmm, uh, code over here, there are some, in this uh, hmm, project, there are some examples. Please play with those examples, okay? Make some changes and try to play with this. So you got your answer, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. And this, really, this will take some time yes. to understand. And it really needs to practice. And only theoretical discussion will not be sufficient. Yes, what is your question? What is my FOS here? Pardon? What is my FOS here? I'm more than asking for the FOS dot write. Does dot write serve the same purpose as print line? As print line? Look, dot write, write method is used to write something in the data file. Okay, I'm just let, let, Let's move my cursor here. But if I move my cursor here, can you see what is said?
Okay, so let us do that. We can do that. Okay. This out C. Oh, you said, uh, you said, uh, what is that one? F O S dot. Yeah, there are some other methods. Let us see how many methods we have. So, within, we will look for the file methods within only file output stream class. So one thing that it has a close, right? We will not use close. Okay, then we have get channel. We don't need that one. We have get FD file description. We don't need that. Let us go in the down. We have a write method. Okay, write method. Write B is byte dot length bytes from the specified byte array to this file output stream. So write method is used uh, uh, for writing. Okay, and then write method, we have another write method that takes integer argument and we have another write method that takes integer, it is also offset and length yeah, right method is this. So, so what is the other method you said? Is there any print line here? I'm, I'm not sure. Is there any print line? I don't have any print line. So, for file and output stream, we don't have any print line. So, as soon as I put Joseph to bring coffee next in next class, okay? This class, this is, my class is not a good class to take a nap. Okay. You have to bring coffee for us. Bring two coffees. One for you and one for us. Okay. I know some people you work already get fired. Okay. But we are almost done. Right? We are almost done. What else we have left? Parallel processing? And binary search tree. Binary search tree and the last topic, and then parallel processing. Okay, we are almost done. I think at this point you should get interest, right? You are actually learning something. <coughs> yes. Any issue? Okay, so this program I have made. So okay, so. Mm, Okay, so actually your uh, okay. So instead of you, so a four s file output stream does not have any print. You said what? What method? No, object name you can give any name. No, you object name you can give any name. So this name object name you can give any name, right? Okay. Sorry? <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so let us take instead of instead of the putting a, hmm, putting on a file, if we put on system.out.print line, that is standard, right? Output device, it will it should print on the monitor, right? Okay, let me, I, don't, I have not tested it, so let me give it a try. Okay, so it says, enter something. Okay, so it says, hello friend, if you say, this time, okay, so it is showing me on the console. Right? So now it should not go to the file. Let us open the file. It should not go there. Because I did not use, uh, where is my location, file location? 
within within the chapter 15 src 15 is on test I said hello I said hello friend what did it come hello but it did not take I'm not sure it's not suitable to use a uh, 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 output so this is why Okay, so the, the, the last thing that I wanted to tell you, in order to read some data from a keyboard, okay, and put save that in a file, okay, we need to add, we need at least two things, three things, maybe three things. First, uh, we need to input stream, okay, in order to take input from keyboard. Second thing, we need to uh, use a file stream in order to open or create a file, right? And then the third thing is that we need a file output stream in order to send my entire data into the file. So this is why program most program works in a combination of input stream and then file stream and file output stream there are four kinds of stream object maybe remember that file input file output and keyboard input stream and, and input stream at least three three kinds okay and in and for and input stream we say that uh, we have scanner and uh, buffer reader this two okay and there is another program that i like you if you are interested for in depth and more study this program has uh, a print uh, have a program this is a, actually i got it from <coughs> from the internet this program if you run this program then it will send your file this file text.pdf and it should be on your root directory and make sure that maybe uh, <coughs> maybe you can use dot and then forward slash and then if you have this file on your root directory or program root this program folder okay within uh, file i operation this folder <coughs> And if you run this program, so whatever the content of this file should be sent to the printer. And I tested it, so it works in my office computer printer. But here it will not print, I know. Because, okay, one thing that it says printer, okay, that this file does not exist, okay. It says this file does not exist. Okay, it says system cannot find from the actually I don't have a file name uh, at this location but I have a different file name right on this location I have a file as test.txt so the good thing I can do uh, test.txt okay this time it should okay it is it is sending me uh, printer information and actually I don't have any printer installed on this computer so if I have any printer installed in this computer then it should print whatever is my file chart. you can try it but I, I this program is not a robust and good program I saw that sometimes it works sometimes it does not so that what uh, I figured it out that if it does not work then I have to close my Eclipse and then reopen the program, then it works. 
it's not a good program, but you can get get some idea, right? How to use printer, how to print your file using a printer. Actually, people do not work on this much because operating system has this feature on printing stuff like file closing, printing the operating system has built in. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, you all have questions tonight. <laughs>